The government considers further economic measures. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. It looks like the government is considering further economic measures to deal with this illness outbreak. So Scott Morrison is considering further economic measures as illness, illness fears mount for aged care residents. Cabinet ministers are coming together to consider urgent economic measures as Australia contends with the spread of the illness. The meetings are happening as experts consider whether to restrict access to aged care homes in an effort to prevent the illness reaching some of society's most vulnerable people. And this is the thing, guys. With this illness, the biggest issue is we have no natural immunity to it. This is the process that our species is getting a natural immunity to it. And it's just a lottery, if you survive or not. And with regards to the elderly, they are definitely at a higher rate of risk. Prime Minister Scott Morrison is meeting with the Treasurer and Finance Ministers this afternoon to discuss further economic measures following last week's 17 billion stimulus package. They're discussing problems in specific sectors, such as airlines, and what challenges require immediate responses. Well, here you go. I mean, our tourism industry, guys, and I'll just bring this up to show you, this graphic. It's 60 billion. Well, it was 60 billion, and it was 3% of our GDP. It employs a lot of people. It employs a lot of people indirectly. I have family who have worked working at the airport. She just told me that um, hours have been cut. They've all been asked to go and leave. So there you go, guys. It's going to start filtering through the economy. Businesses are going to have to start cutting if they've got any chance of surviving. They may not even survive otherwise. So if the government starts stimulating, stimulating, going into more and more debt, generating more and more money, how long is it going to be until, well, Australians start to lose confidence in the purchasing power of their money? Or if the money supply increases, driving up inflation, reducing the purchasing power that we have, how do you think people will, will respond? The Prime Minister has also decided he will relocate from Sydney to Canberra to be closer to bureaucrats and make it easier to conduct meetings of the National Security Committee of Cabinet. No decision has been made yet about whether his family will join him. This morning, Mr. Morrison and his senior ministerial colleagues went on a media spree in a bid to reassure Australians as Victoria declared a state of emergency and the ACT declared a public health emergency. So this is getting even more serious. I mean, the issue is it hasn't been contained. It's kind of too late now. You just need to minimize the damage and allow the health services, allow the health services to deal with it. Because my understanding is the biggest risk is if if uh, you can get a you know, damages your lungs, essentially getting a bacterial infection, and that can cause your death. And that's where having access, you know, to medical intervention at that point, that's where it can help you. It's really the only place it can help you. So if our hospitals are flooded, that's the issue. A state of emergency is not a state of panic, the Prime Minister said. And he's right there. It isn't a state of panic, but people are already panicking. People are concerned. People are very concerned. I mean, people are hoarding toilet paper. They're hoarding food. They're worried it's going to run out when, you know, it's not going to run out. Not in Australia. A state of emergency puts in place special powers for state governments to help manage the spread of the epidemic. Yesterday... It was an issue discussed by the state premiers that they will be all moving effectively to that footing. Federal leaders also urged shoppers to stop panic buying as supermarket chains announced restrictions, restricted opening hours solely for elderly and disabled people. Concerns have been raised about whether some of the most vulnerable members of the community are missing out on essentials as panic buying and stockpiling continues. With all of this going on, it's really inconvenient having a wife that's about to give birth in two weeks because I'd like to avoid the hospital but you know although I, I have watched four births you know I'm sure I'm sure we could manage four girls I that's the thing I needed to buy a uh, a baby heart rate monitor 
You know, the little little ones they put on the mother to uh, to measure it. I'll have to see if I can get one. Let's all look after each other and be respectful to each other and help each other out, Mr. Morrison said. Well, there was footage on Twitter of people fighting in Woolworths in Melbourne. Pe- people are just, you know, they're getting tribalistic and desperate. Foreign Minister Maurice Payne said people needed to be measured in their shopping. I've also seen the reports of panic buying. I suppose it would be one description, she said. They're not just happening here, they're happening in other countries as well, and it's not necessary. Yes, but no one trusts politicians. What are you going to do? Are you going to not stock up on a bit of extra food if you can? Or are you going to believe your politicians, believe your leaders? How many times have they been wrong? How many times? Would you rather have a bit of extra stuff? Oh no, I wasted a couple hundred dollars buying things I may have to use over a few months. Then not have it. I mean, we've all seen the images from other countries around the world. We've all seen Venezuela. You know, all these socialist utopias that have all crumbled. You know, how can our socialist utopia be any different? So it's not the case that stores are going to close or supplies are going to cease. Well, yeah, I mean, see, this is the thing. I'm certain, or com- fairly confident that we're still going to have access to the services, but people may want to self-isolate. So then that's also another reason why people may be stockpiling. So is, is it a sensible move or isn't it? I mean, it probably would have been more sensible for people to have do it, done it in the past, further along. But, uh, you know, I can't blame them, although fighting over toilet paper seems strange. But then again, that says more about the, the diet of the average Aussie than anything else. The Prime Minister's early morning media blitz came as new, a new ban on non-essential mass gatherings of more than 500 people came into force. A newly formed national cabinet, including Mr. Morrison, the premiers and chief ministers, held its first meeting yesterday as the Commonwealth and states worked together to counter the illnesses spread. New travel requirements mean all people arriving in Australia, including citizens, must self-isolate for a fortnight. The government has also banned cruise ships from docking in Australia for 30 days. Those cruise lines are just going to take a hammering. So aged care, testing concerns. Health authorities <clears throat> are consider- considering whether to restrict visits to aged care facilities to protect elderly people from spread of the illness. Aged care minister Richard Colbeck said residential aged care providers were being encouraged to limit visits for time from today. Deputy Chief Medical Officer Professor Paul Kelly said Chief Medical Officers from around the nation would meet in person on Monday afternoon to consider what more should be done to protect high-risk groups. We need to do what we can to limit the opportunity for the infection to come into aged care. And that is the big risk, risk guys. If it goes through aged care, it's going to be a huge problem. There are a range of measures that we put in place in flu season when there's a large number of influenza cases in the, co- in the community or indeed if there's an outbreak with an aged care facility. Professor Kelly said the government needed to be, to be careful and prudent about its use of testing, flagging some issues with consumables in relation to the testing kits. And that's the problem as well. After one testing clinic was open, 1,600 people were tested but just one was found to be positive. You need to look at where you get the best bang for your buck, he said. He declined a request to elaborate, saying only that we were continuing to test. Now, that's a consideration because you don't want to run out of the material to test. You know, you've got to keep that in mind because it's flu season too, guys. (laughs) It's winter. It's gotten bloody cold the last few days. So schools will remain open. Prime Minister said the federal government will would continue to monitor whether schools should be shut down. But he said the advice of medical war- authorities was that schools currently remained safe. The situation may change in the future, but when it does, that's when we'll act, he said. There is something that changes each day, and you proportion your response to the information and caseloads you have. So I think they will respond to that in time. I know we were talking to to a neighbor who was saying her boss was on the plane flight back behind Peter Dutton. 
He hasn't gotten tested. He hasn't done anything about it. He hasn't self-isolated. So we'll have to see, guys. We will have to see. So there you have it. Potential for more economics measures, additional stimulus spending. We'll have to see what is in the works, guys. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. Take care, and we'll see you next time. If you're a fan of the channel, you want to help me produce more content, there are a few ways you can. Share the videos, get it out there, help the channel grow. You can support us financially on Patreon or via YouTube through a small monthly donation. You can use our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay for your consumer purchases or independent reserve and KuCoin for the crypto traders out there. We also have access to PayPal for direct donations or merch we sell from the Heiser Says website. Take care, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.